Hello and welcome back to an emergency fantasy football podcast. I'm your host, Charles Scalise, and with the Andrew Garfield to my Toby Maguire, Chris Scalise. What's up? <laughs> uh, so, there was a... Is, is it breaking news? Oh, it's breaking news. There's my yeah. sound, there's my sound quota. <laughs> uh, You've reached your sound quota for the episode. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm done, I'm done. Um, to the outro. Yeah, yeah, so there was a bit of a trade. A bit of a trade? There was a bit of a trade earlier today. It was and kind I of a to, trade. It wasn't really. It was just a I need to bring up... Oh, exit out of your birthdays thing. <laughs> Accidentally. I That's didn't okay. Do that. Okay. Um, oh, I got a message. <laughs> so Colin goes, I didn't read most of the text. Everyone's going to see like this text, so I'm just going to read that out loud. But I saw stupid decisions, so I'm guessing the trade involves Kevin, and you'd be correct. It does. <laughs> um, and it also involves me. Oh. So, oh. Yeah. So I'm going to, I need to find the details just so, like, you know, I get it right because it's really fucking confusing. Pardon my fucking language. All right. So, <laughs> so, all right. So what ends up happening is I get. I still I keep pick one. I get pick eight. I get the fourth pick in the second round. Kevin doesn't pick till pick twenty, so the last pick in the second round. But he gets my third and fourth, and then we swap fifths, swap sixths. Then I get his eighth. Then we swap ninths. Jesus. <laughs> so like. The relevant part of this trade is the firsts through, like, the sixths. Everything else, they probably won't even be on our teams <laughs> by the end of the yeah. season. Yeah, no, that's confusing. Yeah, it's really fun. See, he, so I get a text at, like, 11 o'clock today asking about this while I'm fucking doing my thing at work. Right. And I'm just like, all right, like, I get it. Like, trading. And he's just writing all the shit down on the Yeah, Facebook. like I'm just like, alright, just like tell me what's going on. Like <laughs> I need to I'm doing this, I'm doing this all at the same time. Yeah, you know, I had to call my girl Gwen at Ohio. Oh, Gwen. You know what's funny? It's because so we are the so Rich is the leader out of everyone in the world and he has the most death benefits tied up in like one person. It's like one point eight billion. Something something ridiculous. And so we're the sales leader at Ohio National. Okay. So when we call them, it's they transfer us to a Wessel specialist, and it's always Gwen. And she loves talking to me because she says I'm so cheerful all the time. Yeah, she's such a cheerful person. Yeah, so. You're the biggest chap con right now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so that was the trade. Just um, a recap. So <laughs> Charles gets Kevin's first round pick. And I get his second round pick. Now we swap second round? Wait. No, no, I yeah, gave... swap second round. We swap second rounders, so I'm 13 instead of 20. Mm-hmm. And then Kevin gets Charles' third. And fourth. And fourth. Yeah. And then... Not, not fifth. Wait. No, we swapped fifths, I think. Oh, yeah, and fifth. Oh, you got my... F- no, no, we swapped fifths, didn't we? Because I definitely have a fifth round pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we swapped. And then we didn't swap sixth. Yeah, no, you didn't we swap sixth. Didn't do anything with sevenths, and then we he gave me his eighth, and then we swapped ninths. So the fucking that's confusing. Yeah. So when I draft Deshaun Jackson when, when in the ninth gets, round like, or whatever, like you said, like when it gets to the eighth round, what is the point of him giving you an eighth? Like, what, oh, oh, it's because I gave him two picks, so I needed another back. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so that I could have fifteen. Although I don't really care about the eighth pick anyway, but whatever. I'll All right. So I'm assuming. You're happy with this trade. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to... I mean, of course, like, I'm not going to make a trade and think that I got worse, but... Right. Um, I mean, I'm going to wait for Kevin to say... Because he's going to come on. He's going to say his piece, why his, you know, why his team's going to be for the better. Yeah. And, you know, I'll save my stuff to the end because we're going to have Brian on. He's going to say, you know, who won the trade, who lost the trade, was it an even trade, whatever. He'll give his thoughts. And then, um, oh yeah, and you'll give your thoughts. You said you wanted to give your I thoughts. I do want to. Okay, yeah, so, you know, you can, you can go for that whenever. Now? 
Go sure, you want to you want to give it now? Give it now. Okay, so my first thoughts are. And then you guys can debate this in the group chat. I'm sure it'll blow up at some point when everyone <laughs> when everyone hears. Yeah, once somebody hears this podcast, and once someone, someone hears it, text it into the group chat. Ricky will probably start talking yeah, about so it. Yeah, so the people who will hear about it through text are Ricky, Josh, Sean, Ben. Yeah, so half of our league <laughs> won't listen to this. But that they'll get it in the group chat. Sean will hear about it at the draft. He'll right. be like, "Oh, Charles is picking one eight and thirteen. What the fuck?" And we'll be like, oh, see, <laughs> this is what happened. So, yeah, so that's when Sean will hear about it. Um, Colin, I'm assuming, is going to listen. Ben, I'll probably just tell him tonight when I see him. And this is, all right, we're at, it's 614. Jeopardy starts at 7, so we need to, uh, I just texted Kevin yeah. through your phone. Okay. And uh, he said that he is not available right now. So he says he's available in 30 minutes. Which doesn't mean necessarily that we have to make this go on for another 30 minutes. We can just edit it? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm an editing whiz. Okay, so call Brian then. Right now? Yeah. Or text him, see if he's available. I don't, did he text me back? Um. No. Okay, we'll call him. He may have been, like, eating or something. Oh, you know, he might have a game. I don't know. Call him, call him and check anyway. If he doesn't answer, he doesn't answer. Then you can just give your reaction. We can record the rest later. It doesn't really matter. Um. Yeah. Is it on speaker? Not yet. If he doesn't pick up, I don't want everyone to hear the... Hello? Hello? Yeah, then you, you can just give your reaction to it all. I have a... Ve- in terms of, like, what's actually, like, how much this actually matters, I feel like it's not that big, considering, like, the top six is, like, the the, the picks that you want to have. Eight, eight's good. Like, eight's a good, not, not that, like, I don't understand moving from eight to having your first pick at 20. That's what I don't understand. Like, I understand that eight's not a good first-round pick. Like, it's at that point, it might as well just be, like, a boomer bust second-rounder. But, like, why make your first pick 20th is my question. Because at that point, you're kind of hoping to get someone that you're going to consider a steal. Like, I don't know. who I, don't, I really don't know the draft board that well. Somebody like Jordy Nelson, maybe. I don't know if he's supposed to be high, low, second round. I'm assuming he's a second rounder. But at that point, you're trying to get... Oh, you know we could call? Call Tommy. See, if Tommy's probably around. He can give analysis. At this point, it doesn't really matter because I know we can, you know, do whatever. Just hear what Tommy has to say. Because yeah. I'm sure he, uh, you yeah. know. I'm sure he has some shit to talk about, Kevin. Yeah, that's kind of their gimmick. I do like I do like the move being getting all those middle picks because I feel like third and fourth round is where you can get a lot of good players, a lot of good steals. I mean, just when I was just texting Kevin on your phone, now I saw that I saw something because it said something about Eddie Lacy. Oh yeah, see here's what I, like I get his rationale with like because like getting all those middle round picks like cool, but like the guy who's trashed Eddie Lacy every year is now including Eddie Lacy in. I don't know. I thought it was interesting. Oh Brian. Oh, he's at work. Oh, okay. Never mind then. That's exactly what I just texted him. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, so. Yeah, let me just look at this goddamn shit again. Why do, why do you guys have to make it so goddamn confusing? So. <laughs> hey, I'm just a yes man. Yeah, evidently. So, my thought process is, for you at least, who the fuck cares if you don't have a fourth round pick if you have two firsts? <laughs> okay. I wouldn't. Yeah. You got two first-round picks. I don't care that I don't have a fourth-round pick. You don't have a third-round pick, but you moved up from 20 to 13 in the second, which is huge for a second-round pick. The the picks moving down in the fifth round, and however many times they moved down. I think it's just fifth, fifth, fifth and sixth. Fifth, sixth, and maybe like and eighth or, or fifth, sixth, and ninth. I think I moved down. And seventh, I stayed the same. Like, there comes a point in a fantasy draft where that just becomes negligible. Like, you're going to get guy A or guy B, yeah. and you see, like, the same boom or bust potential in both of them. But it really comes down to preference at that point. Like, if it was me, and I'm sitting there at, in the fourth round, and Eddie Lacy's still there, and I have the 42nd pick, 
and I really want Eddie Lacy, so I get him in with the 42nd pick, and then somebody at 49 was just like, ah, oh, I really thought he was going to be there for my pick. Because, like, he probably would have been if it wasn't me picking. Yeah. But, I mean, with with the players that Kevin is trying to get, I don't know if he wants us to be confidential or not, so I'm not going to say any of these people. But yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. the trade that he made. Like, yeah. The, I don't. I don't see. I don't see all these people necessarily. Like, th- there's no way in hell he gets these seven guys. Like, the chance of that happening are really slim. Uh, yeah, well. But he set himself up to get these caliber guys, yeah. which makes for a good team. Yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah, so you know, since Brian is at work and Kevin said in 30 minutes, I'm just gonna give my thoughts real quick, and then we'll call Tommy. Go for it. All right. So. I think that in fantasy football, we're not building actual football teams. I think that much is clear. Um, so, it's a star-driven league. It's like the NBA in that sense. It's star-driven. You need the the more great players you have, the better you're going to If you get that one star, it's going to change your entire season. Let's look at Jake a couple years ago. Picked up OBJ. Took off, won a championship. Let's look at Brian a couple years ago. Got Josh Gordon, took off, won a championship. Let's look at Jake last year. He didn't win a championship. He went 12-1, and but he drafted David Johnson. Had an amazing season. I, in my one league, drafted Zeke. Was a stud. You, the more great players you have, the better you will be. Obviously, that makes sense. So if you're picking three times in the top 13, and you have the number one pick, so you're getting David Johnson or Lev Bell, who are both studs. Then you're at eight, you can get guys like Mike Evans, A.J. Green, LaShawn McCoy, you know, whoever. Any of those guys who are all really good players. Then at 13, that's basically my third. I can say that's a third round pick. What's going to stop me from getting, getting Gronk there? Who can say that I wouldn't get Gronk? You have Gronk. Say your team is Lev Bell, Gronk, and A.J. Green after two rounds. Who's going to say, like, and then round five, no one's picked Aaron Rodgers yet. Beat Aaron Rodgers, A.J. Green, Lev Bell, and Robert Gronkowski. If you do, good for you. You had an amazing week. I'd rather hang my hat on that than T.Y. Hilton's. And, T.Y. Hilton's a good player. I like T.Y. Hilton. He's a, he's, a, he's a wide receiver, too, though. That's what he is. Okay. Well, rather than resting, hanging my hat on him. I'm insulted. I'm pretty sure he was my wide receiver one last year or two years ago. He was actually mine in one of my leagues, too. <laughs> so, like, I'm not going to. I love celebration, too. Um, Everyone should be doing this at home right now, the T.Y. celebration, if you know what I'm talking about. So, I'll give up. I, I'm i picking three times before. I'm picking twice before some people pick once and three times before some people pick twice. So, I think that I had a. You know, it's really good for my team. I just have to hit on two of those three, and I'm set. I don't even have to hit on all three. It's like it's like what Sam Hinkie said: maximize your chances. If you maximize your odds, with the higher you are in the draft, the better your chances are of getting a star. And I have one, which is best odds, then eight, which is better than nine, ten, eleven, and then twelve, and then thirteen. That's the thing, though, too. Like, what are the odds of you missing so bad at ten or at eight? That it's not like a third round pick caliber player, right? Like, what What are the odds of the eighth pick not being a wide receiver too? Like we saw it last year. Like sure, Todd Gurley flopped so bad. Yeah. In the Rams offense after having a great rookie year, but that that doesn't happen like that often. If it happens, it's you got injured. You beat your kid with a fucking switch. Yeah. It's something like that. It's not. It's not that often that you get a first pick and an eighth pick and they both are suck. bad. Yeah. It's it's hard it's it's hard for me to say that you came out of this trade losing at all. And if you look at the first round ra- like obviously there are first round busts every year in fantasy. Yeah. But if you look at the guys who are busts, you can see why they were busts. Look at Ty Gurley. That offense just sucks. Yeah, it was, it's hard to get anything going when you're talking when your quarterback sucks and your offensive line sucks. It's just a recipe for disaster. Right. DeAndre Hopkins, his quarterback is garbage. 
Well, I don't, you know, we'll see this year. Yeah, but last yeah, year's quarterback was garbage. Receivers. Yeah. Um, well, now nah, they're fine at wide receivers, just that they were just so bad. Like, yeah, well, Osweiler just, just wouldn't find them. Teams every time. Um, who else was there? Adrian Peterson just fell off a cliff. Like, you can just see, you know, that's just, he's just done now. Like, that's just, he's done. Don't and sleep on Adrian Peterson. He's in the Saints now. He's a backup now with Mark, Mark Ingram. Um, but you look at a guy like A.J. Green, who's had 1,000-plus yards every season in his career. Look at a guy like LaShawn McCoy, who's been a rushing leader, was one of the top three, top four running backs in fantasy last year. And you look at a guy like Mike Evans, who was really good than, you know, average, then really good. You know, maybe he goes back to being average, but with Jameis Winston getting better and that offense getting better and all coming together, who's to say he's going to be bad? Then Gronk has bust potential ah, potential just because he's injury prone. But when he's healthy, he's far and away the best tight end in the NFL. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you can call Tommy when, after, you, after your point. You can make your point. I actually want to – actually, we could, uh, I'll call Tom. Actually, let me text Tom first. Just make sure he's uh, available. I, I want to actually – you know, I'll just, I'll just call him. I want to I wanna talk to you about something after – just remind me when we're done talking to Tom because I want right. to dispute something. Not, not necessarily that we'll dispute it, but that will uh, give us something to talk about. Tom. <laughs> Did you just wake up? No, I'm cleaning my car. Oh, okay. Well, you're uh, you're on the podcast, and you know the details wow. of the trade, and I just want to hear your thoughts. On the trade? Yes. Terrible for Kevin. Congrats to you. Thank you. A little salty that uh, I didn't ex- or he didn't accept my trade with him, but yeah, for those uh, that are in the. In the dark, me and Tommy basically made the exact same offer to Kevin, and he accepted mine over his. So we're kind of competing for his love and affection. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Any, any, anything else you want, would like to add? No, nah, that's it, really. I mean, Kevin really. Uh, can I curse on this or no? Yeah, sure. I already did five times. Like, five times, nice. Kevin really fucked himself over on this one. And, uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say, really. Alright. Well, well, it's been nice talking to you. Um, can you have fun cleaning your car. And I want a real interview sometime, though. Okay, yeah, we'll have a, um, after the draft, I'll do a, a, uh, longer podcast where I interview more teams about, like, their draft and whatnot. So, yeah, I'll have yeah. you on. Oh, is that when I get to do my analysis of the draft? Sure. Shut up, Chris. <laughs> hey, I'm producing. I'm producing. You're lucky to be on here. You're, you're lucky to be on the podcast. Did I miss the uh, guess what Chris is wearing segment? <laughs> you just I saw. I just him. saw you. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, guess anyway. All right, fine, fine, fine. All right, I'll see you guys later. All right, see you. It's not fair. They know I'm poor. They know I didn't change. <laughs> All right, yeah. So I guess that'll. I mean, just you know, that'll be it for now. I guess, and then we'll. Um, Get Kevin whenever he is ready. And yeah, then so Brian later, I guess. I don't know. I wanted to talk to you. Oh, about, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> See, I, I wouldn't even remember. Stuff too. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can do so that. We're not done yet. We might we might be able to hold out till Kevin, depending on when he's All ready. Right. He said he was going to text you. I don't know if he... No, it's Jason and Ben or Noah. Um, so, it's pretty obvious. Well, I'm not going to say it's obvious, but there are... A few really good high-end wide receivers this year that everyone's looking to draft at the top. Yeah. But who, in your opinion, is the most talented wide receiver in the league? If you, if you can put him in the situation that, let's say, a good wide receiver is already in, and, I don't know, let's just say, let's just say, if you could put him in a situation where he's protected and he'd be getting the type of looks that the top guys do, who do you think is the best wide receiver, like, talent-wise? Julio Jones. Okay. Yeah. Is there any reasoning? Or is um, he's, he's big, he's fast, good route runner, and has great hands. And he's proven time after time that he is dynamic and can make a huge impact, you know, on any play, any game. 
Would you would you pick him over Antonio Brown? If yes, I would. Yep. Antonio Brown's great. Catches a lot of balls. He's fat. He's quick. Great route runner. But Julio Jones has that height advantage that gives him an advantage in my mind. Would you Would you consider Antonio Brown since? You think of him as the second best fantasy wide receiver, but do you also think of him as the second best wide receiver talent wise in the league? Or do you think Antonio? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Okay. So I, I agree with you. I think Julio Jones is also the most talented wide receiver. Um and it's it's hard it's hard to it's hard to pick against him, especially like every time I think of Julio Jones now I think of that catch he made in the Super Bowl. Where he kept his feet in bounds and it was in the fourth quarter late game, like really, it really should have won them the game. Yeah. Like the amount of opportunities that they had to win that game. Um, but like, if you think, if you can think of a wide receiver that is more clutch, and if if you can think of a wide receiver in the league that you have a fourth and goal in the fourth quarter of a big game and you need a touchdown, there's not a single guy that I'd rather have other than him. Yeah. Like maybe Gronk. Just because Gronk's huge, and yeah. like, if you have a cornerback covered Gronk, they can't cover him. If you have a linebacker covered Gronk, they're not fast enough. But Julio is just—he just—he's an athletic specimen, and he's—he look—he look like he's built for the game. Like he's like six foot four. He's got—he's got the, the prototype, you'd say. Right. He's like Giannis. He's like Giannis. Yeah. yeah. He's got—he's got the—he's got the football gene. Um, and it's—it's it's hard to argue against Antonio Brown not being the second best wide receiver in the league. But when you when you look at some guys that have been talented for so long, like Larry Fitzgerald and Dez, like the, to 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 remain at that level, like that's so impressive to me. Mm-hmm. Like those those two guys, Brandon Marshall too. Like I know Brandon Marshall is not like the star anymore now that he's on the Giants, but those guys are really really impressive in my mind. Um, and I wanted to ask you the same thing about the running backs, like who. If you had to put one running back in your backfield, Love Bell. Love Bell. Yeah, yeah easily. I'd have, I'd have to go with him too. Easily, he's, he's so probably versatile. the best. Yeah, he's a, he's he's something like he's like fifteenth in the past. Like I, I don't know how many years it was. He's like fifteenth in the past, like however many years, like five years or something in receptions in the yeah. entire NFL. Like that's and he's a great runner. Like he just can't. He gets suspended too often. That's the only. That's the only thing. But yeah, definitely him. Mike um, Tomlin has to get a ring out of those. Two. He's one, I'd say. I don't know who's two, because Zeke is really good. Yeah, Zeke. but David Johnson's a better pass catcher. Yeah, Zeke's so. just scary because he's like twenty four. Yeah, which is terrifying just, yeah. for a fan of the NFC East. Yeah, well, a fan of a different team in the NFC East. Um, all right, so let me get. Let me get the this day in history ready. Really, nothing happened today, which is July twenty first, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so in eighteen seventy three, Jesse James, I'm sure you've heard of him. Not not the football, not the Steelers tight end, but uh, the guy who used to rob trains. Oh. Uh, his first train robbery off west of the Mississippi. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm re- I'm really reaching here. If you can't. Tell. <laughs> Um, Do you just want to release this, like, part one, two, and three? Just have part one now, and then... I mean, I can just edit together. Okay, yeah, that works. Probably be easier. Alright, yeah. Um, the North Atlantic Treaty was ratified by the U.S. Senate in 1949. And, uh, let me get over to all sports news on Instagram, because I'm sure they'll have something that makes me not sound like a fucking cunt for reading this out. <laughs> Uh, where's your Instagram? There it is. Alright, so... Let's read some birthdays today. The birthdays include... Ben Simmons was yesterday. We should have done this yesterday. Yeah, Ben Simmons. Happy birthday. Get some get some twisted Shirley Temples with LeBron. <laughs> yeah. Take him up on that offer. So we got CeCe Sabathia, Whitney Merciless, DeAndre Jordan... Dr. Jordan turned 29. I, for some reason, thought he was still younger than that. Um, David Carr, the Ooh. very Derek's, car. Derek's brother. Um, Jesus, I feel like I should know who these people are. I know John, who John Osimel is, I think. Um, Cyrus Quan 
Geo. I don't know who that wow, is. Wow, you just skipped right over Jason Thompson. What is wrong with you? I was getting to it. I was gonna get. I was gonna hit Y and Chen first. <laughs> Calvin Winslow Jr. seems important too. Uh, yeah, Jason Thompson. Um, Philly's yeah. own. Really? Mm-hmm. That's why I was mad you skipped him. Oh. Um, Seattle Henderson sounds like a football player. <laughs> Maybe. Really sure. Maybe. And let's see. Let's see what they got in terms of this day in their history. So. Three years ago today, Evan Turner signed with the Celtics. Good reason. Two years ago today, Richard Jefferson signed with the Cavs. Yes. Shinsu Chu hit for a cycle today, two years ago. Mm. And last year, the NBA pulled the 2017 All-Star game from Charlotte on this oh, day. Oh, wow. Huh, interesting. Yeah, there's so much more here. Than... Oh, and Brett Myers signed for the White Sox five years oh, ago today. Oh, great. For Brett Myers. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just... Uh, We'll do a quick cut ski to part number two where we talk to Kevin, who will hopefully have some more insight for the trade. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we'll see you guys. Well, it won't be any time for you, but it'll be a couple minutes for us. So we'll see you then. All right, well, this is going to sound incredibly choppy in uh, you know, the sense that we just said we'll be back. And literally it took two minutes. I couldn't even get all the way upstairs in my house before Kevin said that he's ready from the time that we signed off the first time. So we're about to call him and get his thoughts on the trade. You have heard mine at this point and, you know, what I think about my side. And we'll get his. Hello. What's up? Am I on the pod? You are on the pod. And uh, I've already given the details of the trade, so I guess you can just kind of give your thoughts on everything and how you feel going forward. Well, I think it was a... Um... It's obviously going to be a move that gets criticized a lot when you give up your two best picks and give them to the guy who already has the first pick. I understand that, but um, I think Tom just doesn't like it because I didn't do it with him. And, <laughs> um, it's like you heard what Tom said. <laughs> yeah, it's like you were here for when Tommy was uh, was here. Oh, was he saying that I almost did it with him? Yeah. Yep, so there we go. <laughs> and, I mean, it gives me, basically... Six picks in rounds three and four because I have the last pick in round two and the first pick in round five, which are essentially second or third and fourth round picks. And then in between those two, I also have four picks pretty spaced out evenly in there. So I feel like I have, I'm going to have six really solid players. Not to mention I also have the first pick in the fifth round and the third pick in the sixth round. So, I think I can get some really solid players and build a, build a championship squad this year. I like it. I like it. The, uh, <coughs> the good analysis. Um, yeah, you do have a shitload of picks in rounds two to, two to five. I think, like, I was looking at it. It's like you have, like, six picks, and, like, everyone else has, like, four or something like that. It was something, yeah, I, something yeah, weird. That makes sense. Yeah. I have six picks in that range and the next most picks anyone else is going to have is two. Oh, God. Okay. In between my six. So, like, in between them. Yeah. So, yeah, I have a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, wait, what are you pulling up? I'm getting the trivia ready. Oh, Chris is getting the trivia ready while, okay. while we sit here. Yeah, so, uh, Kevin, you can participate in the trivia too. Yeah. I have to get ready. <laughs> Charles, what do you think about the trade? What are you, uh... Um, you can hear my thoughts when the podcast <laughs> <laughs> is released. Live on Crossman Gaming. <laughs> on Crossman Gaming. <laughs> Crossman Gaming. Subscribe. Subscribe. Maybe I'm you'll subscribe. be the fourth subscriber. Who knows? Oh yeah. I, I have more. I have so, sus- did you ever read my comments on the last video yet? No. <laughs> What'd you say? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I'll have to check it. I dropped three comments for him. Oh wow. All right. I might have been a 17th view. Charles, I have to say, I thought the last segment and the last one, I thought, they were, I thought there was some good stuff on there. The, uh, the uh, watch your parents of sex or yeah. join in. Thank that you. Was, <laughs> that was highly uh, thoughtful. Thank you. We, we bring intelligent conversation to this podcast only. 
Yes. <laughs> also, I, I was in a PlayStation party with Chris and Tom when you were doing the most gay segment, and I immediately said I know I'm going to be first on both lists. <laughs> I mean, in, I in, in defense, Jake, uh, Jake did ask if Chris counted for being in the <laughs> league. <laughs> Which was an unfair question. I'm, clear, I'm clearly not in the league. <laughs> Does uh, Chris count? Yeah, also... We could, if Chris wanted to, we could get a 12th person to be in the league, so you guys have to convince him. Who would that 12th be, though? Noah would be my addition. Noah Yoke. Do you know anything about football? Yeah. Okay. And there's, and there's enough there to qualify. In the league. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why don't we just get Skilton back? <laughs> we should. <laughs> and Noah and Skilton a little. Fine, he's, he's riding in your so car to, to New Jersey. Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Alright, alright, we're gonna, Chris is gonna ask some questions now. Okay. The first trivia question is. You're really loud. <laughs> yeah, well. That hurt. <laughs> where did the sport of curling originate? Can you repeat the name of the sport? Curling. Curling? Oh. Canada. Okay. No, not Canada. Uh, Kevin, your turn. Finland. No, but that's, that's pretty close. Russia. Sweden. Damn it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Sweden? Norway. No. no. Poland. I mean, in terms of you being close, like you were in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Germany? England. England. No. Germany? Both of you guys. Okay. I don't know. What is it? Scotland. Oh, wow. Sweet. <laughs> I would have felt really dumb if, if I just said, uh, Mexico. Even after I said Without it was in really... Europe. Okay. Here's an easier one. All uh, right. Good. There's just been a lot of these, so maybe you'll get tripped up. What city hosted the 2012 Summer Olympics? London. Oh, oh nice. Bang. That one gets Charles. What kind? What, was it London? Yeah. Okay. I just visualized. I can tell you 2014 winter, Sochi. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> can you tell me Wait, 20, 2016? Can, Rio, Rio. Can you tell yeah, me 2010 winter? Vancouver. Oh, oh nice. Go. Let's go. Oh, come on. <laughs> can you tell me 2006 winter? I that's think I know fair. this. That's not fair. That's not fair. Was that one here? Uh, I guess it would have been. Um, well, yeah, it's every four. I'm pretty sure I know this. Yeah. Uh, Let me double check myself. Uh, I have no idea. I think it's Aspen? Cancun. Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Torino. That's uh, all right. That's all right. Get it next time. What if I was just sitting here reading your, uh, <laughs> your trivia thing the entire time and none of the, none of the <laughs> callers knew? Well, then you suck at reading if you couldn't figure it out with Scotland. <laughs> all right. Okay. Is it um, Poland? Poland? So, what year was the first Super Bowl? 1967. Okay, that was impressive. <laughs> you know, I was actually thinking the same thing. It's just, you know, he got it out faster. So, <laughs> that's a tie. That's a tie. <laughs> yeah, tie, tie goes to the runner. Okay. We um, mentally tied. Let's see. Let me give you guys one more. Oh, uh, that one's easy. Oh. Um. Okay, that one's easy too. That's a good trivia question. Yeah, no, uh, I'm on this trivia page, and uh, there's a lot of really obvious questions, and there's some that I think are gonna be hard, but then the answer is really obvious. Mm. Yeah. But that's just not mm, true. Okay. I don't even know what that means. Loyal fans of what NFL team call themselves the One Two Five? Wow. That's pretty yeah. area good. Yeah, I mean, I, I this is the Seattle Seahawks, but I've never referred to them as the one two five. Right, we'll do we'll do one more and then Okay. Um then we'll go. And not I guess we'll not get Brian's analysis, or should we wait for Brian? Because he probably won't be done at work till like ten. Yeah, no, we're fine. Nah, we'll just post it. Fuck yeah, it. I'll yeah. Post it. Okay. We so, got Tommy's expert analysis. So. What stadium oh, <laughs> What stadium was the site of the first Super Bowl and the 1984 Olympics. Um. Atlanta. The. That's not a stadium, but thank you for the, trying. The um. <laughs> the um. Uh, the Rose Bowl. No. N- no. Oh, the Los Angeles Coliseum. Very good. Yeah. Let's go. It's like he's reading right off my phone. Wait, 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 wait. One more thing. One, yes. one more. Even that took me. Really Is there a what? Is there a jigsaw today? Uh, no. I was kind of just doing like a um emergency podcast type thing and then oh. for the next one after the draft i was gonna find it because like jeopardy's coming on soon so like we're running a tight schedule 
Yes, we have 15 minutes. It's not really that tight. Yeah, after shower. Okay. So, after hitting 406 in 1941, who is the last oh, MLB? <laughs> All right, we'll do one more. <laughs> That's impressive. Um, oh, this this one's. I hope this one's I'm easy sure, for I'm Kevin. I'm pretty sure he's batting 399 on the last day of the season. He had like four hits or something. Wow. Yeah, kind of a beast. I don't know if this one's going to be easy for you guys or not. All right. It's easy, I guess we'll it's find easy out. for me. It's soccer related then? Yes. Okay, it's probably it. fucking difficult it. for me. Okay. What team in the 2014 World Cup was the host nation Brazil eliminated by? Germany. Yeah, it was too easy. Yay. Yeah. Too easy. Germany. One more, one more. Here we go. All right. Then it's time to shower. Maybe I'll think of a... The thing, a jig, jiggy saw. Oh, God damn it! Oh, there's one about the Broad Street Bullies. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Chris, you should have prepared these trivia questions prior. <laughs> yeah, well, like Charles we said, we did this it. Was kind of it was impromptu. real impromptu. Oh my jinx! <laughs> oh my jinx! Well, this is going on YouTube. <laughs> what that we jinxed? <laughs> yep. You're not wrong. Oh my god, these are so easy. Um What? I did not I didn't know that. That's interesting. I think Chris is just reading the trivia for himself now. Well this this one says um what sport can improve your posture? Just find a good question and read it. <laughs> the answer was horseback riding, I was surprised. Uh, Alright, I actually do have a jigsaw, so we'll do it at the end of this call. I just, I just okay. got one real quick. It's thought, pr it's more thought provoking than uh, outrageous. Oh my god! Wait. Alright, if you don't get it in the next two minutes, I'm reading a All jigsaw. Right, I'm... We'll give him two more minutes. We'll oh. give you one more minute. We'll give you like thirty seconds, actually. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> two minutes is gonna be really long. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, this one's a multiple choice. Okay, they don't give me multiple choice? Oh my you God. can't ask the question, which of the following players has not scored at least 30,000 points and just have the answer? Alright, alright, here we go. You have 10 seconds. I have, trivia, I have a trivia question for you. Are you ready? Yeah. How many players in MLB history have struck out more than 175 times and batted 300? Uh, two. Four. The answer is two. Yes. <laughs> the, reason, the reason I bring that up is Aaron Judge is on pace to strike out over two hundred times and still bat three thirty. Oh, damn! That's pretty, pretty interesting. It, he has the highest um, batting average ball in play in league history. Wow. Okay, here's the last question. All right, there we go. Just in time. Whose ear did Mike Tyson bite off in 1997? Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield. I hate myself. All right, so the, uh, the jigsaw is, would you rather know when you're going to die or know how you're going to die? Oh, God. Probably. That's, like, the thing, because. That's, that's really hard, because if you know when you're going to die, that's terrible. You're waiting to your death. Yeah. But if you know how you're going to die, say it's in a car accident, every single time you're driving... It's like, you're going to be paranoid wow. as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Wow. See, my thing would probably be, if if somebody told me how I was going to die, and I knew it was going to be true, if it, if, if it wasn't like a car accident or something, if it was like fucking a heart attack or something, I would just try to do something to, like... Change your fate? Yeah, not not. I guess not that you could like it, because the way, you're being the way, told the way, yeah, the way you're this not, sounds yeah. is that like you're not gonna be able to change it. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna have to go with when. If it's if it's a long time off, I'm also gonna go with when. Yeah, I think I agree. I mean, if it's a short time, I still want to know when. Because I wouldn't be expecting it. Yeah, but if it, if it's a short time, then like I'll just say my goodbyes and like fucking do something crazy. It's like a, not it's here like, for a good long time, but a good time? I guess. 
But m- my thought process, like, if, if it's a long time, I, I'd i be fine with, I'd rather know when. And if it's a short amount of time, knowing when would also be alright, because you'd... It's, it's like the old question, like, what would you do if, if this was your last day on Earth? Like, you'd be able to do that stuff, and you'd know when it's an appropriate time to do that stuff. Charles, the real question is, do you know, like, to the day, or to the year, or to the month? Like, is there a... I think it's to the day. It's, it's like, kind of, like, vague. Like, you know exactly... I, I think it's you know exactly, like, when you're gonna die. I'm gonna go how. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I think I'll go when. No rhyme or reason. Oh, my explanation. Rather no one. My explanation is really good. So. All right. Well, it's been real. I'll see you at the draft probably, and hopefully. Well. Oh yeah, hopefully yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. See you. Okay. So that was Kevin's take. Um, you already heard my take. We will not hear Brian's take, as I initially promised. We also heard Tommy and Chris their takes on everything. You got a jigsaw. It's nine minutes till Jeopardy. So find me a nice uh a nice outro. A nice outro. Oh yeah. Yeah, so Oh yeah, and uh Kyrie Irving's a dumbass if he wants to leave LeBron, by the That's way. That's the thing That's... I actually want to talk about that real quick. Okay. Um if Kyrie there's multiple things that went through my mind when I saw this. One was the fact that he said that he wants to, like, not be overshadowed by LeBron. Yeah. And then he s- followed it up by saying one of my top destinations is the Spurs. Like doesn't make any sense. Yeah, he's going to be overshadowed by Ka- uh, Kawhi. Um, another thing that I was thinking was he might just want to get out of there because he feels like LeBron's going to leave. But then I was contradicted by LeBron saying that he's been blindsided and backstabbed or whatever he said. So, I think it's dumb that... First of all, that news got out. Like, if, if you're going to say that, like, just keep it private. I don't know who re- released that. Was it Woj? No, it was uh, Winhorst. Oh, okay. If, was, if anyone's going to release it, it's still yeah. Braun Analyst. Um, yeah, he, uh, so, yeah, Kyrie, the, when he's the star, when he's the best player on the court for a team, that team does not win basketball games. That's just, that's been his entire career. That's true. The Cavs this past year were 1-9 and nine without LeBron, which is ridiculous why he wasn't the top three MVP candidate. Yeah, I don't... First player to ever average 25-8-8 eight and, eight and shoot 54% from the field. The team goes 1-9 and nine without him. And he's not a top three MVP candidate. Yeah, I think I said top five the first time. I meant top three. I'm not really sure. MV, MVP is turned into a stats thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's just, you know, the biggest stat pattern of the season. It doesn't matter how efficient you are. Russell Westbrook is... Russell Westbrook led the league in missed shots by, like, 200 shots. Yeah, and I shot mean, 42% from the field. But because he plays 46 minutes a game and grabs a bunch of rebounds and holds the ball till t- a second left on the shot clock, he gets enough triple doubles to win MVP and averages seven turnovers a game. I definitely, like, there's got to be people in Oklahoma City that see, like, Jesus Christ, this guy is kind of a cancer. And is the reason that KD left. <laughs> the best yeah, player on the like team he's, left. He's a cancer. Yeah. Like, he, he's not... There's no way in hell they they can beat the Rockets. He's 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 Allen Iverson. In a vacuum, he's great, great player. In a vacuum, he's not you. You can't put a team around him and win a championship. It's just not gonna happen because he needs the ball all the time. When the ball's not in his hands, except he needs the only time he can win, not being the best, like it was with KD. Like he was effective. When KD was there, because KD's the second best player on the planet, like of course he's gonna elevate that team to right at like next to the NBA Finals, literally a one win away. Yeah. And when doesn't matter who you put around Westbrook, if he's the best player on the team, you're not winning a championship. I agree. Yep, it's just not gonna happen. Should we outro? Should we, we should outro? Well, thanks for watching, listening. listening. Viewing. I guess it's a view. Yeah, I mean, subscribe. Subscribe. I Trust other, my game. I have other good videos. Yes. I post walkthroughs. Oh, we're already six minutes till Jeopardy. Let's, let's play this. Yeah, let's, play get, this let's get out of here. Yeah, it's...